Yeah, we're at the track covering the sport of Kings coming up this week. Jamaica's champion trainer Jason Da Costa repeats what his late dad Wayne Da Costa achieved seven years ago, landing the Thornbird Stakes and Prince Consort Stakes double at Caymanus Park. The Barbados champion trainer Andrew Nunes also grabs headlines with feature race success at the Garrison Savannah and a classy win for the 80-year-old gelding I Am Maximus in the world's most famous steeplechase, the Grand National at Aintree in England. Plus the usual check-in on Caribbean success on the North American continent. Our opening story from Jamaica. The road to the Triple Crown Series in Jamaica continued this past weekend with the latest prep events for the early June Guinness races that kick off Thoroughbred Racing's Triple Crown calendar. Nine horses in Sunday's Prince Consort Stakes for Colts and Geldings. All eyes on the 2023 champion two-year-old. Interesting times ahead with leading jockey Tevin Foster aboard. The cold out for his first run this year, coming off his win in December's Jamaica two-year-old stakes. There's a nine-horse field with the odds, as many as six of the starters winners in their last races. Interest in times ahead in the five box, owned by Liz Da Costa and trained by her son Jason Da Costa, the heavy favorite at two to five. The other fancied entries in the betting, the one-horse Crown Chaser, the second favorite at five to two, Jay Spieth, the two-horse at four to one. Four Captain Sparrow and Six Allegiance, both Crown Chasers stablemates from the Anthony Nunes Barn at 15 to 1. Number 7, the Costas Teflon Don, also at 15 to 1. The trip, seven furlongs for Colts and Geldings. They went early splits of 24 by 47-4. And as ace commentator Bran Rickman picked up the call with the field leaving the far turn, the favorite interest in times ahead badly bumped out of the starting gates and off the pace here, but was patiently and confidently handled by Foster as he quickened toward the lead. Teflon Don has now snatched that lead. Jay Speed in pursuit. Unruly Don backing out into third. There goes Midnight Galaxy now shaken up for run and beginning to make some eye-catching progress. Allegiance is there. Interesting times ahead. Also picking up on the outside, but the field will turn for home with Teflon Don just on the outside. Jay Speed now kicking it against the rail and Jay Speed points the head in front. Teflon Don will try to fight back. Interesting times ahead now. Wound up and beginning to close. It is Jay Speed out in front arriving at the furlong pole. Here is interesting times ahead now. Switch down against the rail. Jay Speed holding on. Interesting times ahead trying to close up. Tevin Foster looking for a four-timer. And interesting times ahead will give it to him in the 31st running of the Prince Consort Stakes. Much the best on the afternoon. Interesting times ahead guided to the rail run before pulling clear for the commanding victory. By bold conquest out of the he is the real thing mere. My friend Lucy the cold interest in times ahead makes it three wins in a row and gives form jockey Tevin Foster one of five wins on the afternoon. The first career five-timer for the 29-year-old leading jockey, who twice had four-timers since the start of the year. Liz the Costa's interest in times ahead by three lengths as a two-to-five favorite in the Prince Consort, but trainer Jason the Costa, who won three races on the afternoon. The five-to-two bet crown chaser, after a sluggish start, ran really well to close the second, one minute 28 and three-fifths the winning time for seven furlongs. The Phyllis Guinness Prep, the Thornbird Stakes, was contested on Saturday and it was another Jason Costa show. Although it was the Jamaica two-year-old stakes runner-up, Run Julie Run the favourite to give trainer Ian Passard back-to-back -back Thornbird Stakes wins, he having scored with Bootilicious last year. But as jockey Robert Halladine rouses the Costa's 8-1 shot, Banadura into a three-length lead coming off the final bend. It was clear this field was in trouble. Midnight flight in pursuit. Come home to me is there. Fast and Furious links also in the red racing just in behind them with Miss Cherry and Shani Star. But Banadura brings them into the top of the lane in the Thornbird. They leave the quarter pole. Here is Come Home to Me now coming home strong down against the rail. But it's Banadura with that lead from Come Home to Me in the pink cap. Miss Cherry now asked to come with a rush. Banadura being caught now by Come Home to Me gaining all the time as they flash past the furlong pole. It's Banadura. Come home to me. Has to be switched on the outside as Banadura took the rail. Banadura continuing to hold the lead. Come home to me and run Julie run coming fast but Banadura wins the Thornbird. Halladine's bustling ride gets Banadura home over his closing stablemate. Come home to me and the great favorite run Julie run on the outside. Almost half of this 13 horse field more fancied in the betting than Banadura but at 8 to 1 she cops her third win in five starts. Da Costa, the first trainer now to complete the Thornbird Prince Consort Stakes double since his dad, Wayne Da Costa, achieved it seven years ago in 2017 with She's a Man-Eater and Fearless Samurai. 
and he says after the Phillies' good hotline stakes win last month, he expected more betting support for her in the Thornburg. I was a bit surprised. I thought she would have been, uh, been a bit shorter um, coming off of that good win after layoff. So I knew she would should only improve off of that run, so I was kind of surprised at that. Mileta Zanz Banadura, the 8-1 upset winner by a length and a half in the Thornbird Stakes, chased by the 20-1 stablemate Come Home To Me, with a 6-5 favourite run, Julie run third, 129 and 150 the winning time for seven furlongs, Jockey Halladine with one of two wins on the card. Also Saturday, a big clash in the Lady Gita Trophy race between the impressive racers Desert of Malibu and Mahogany, both odds on in the betting. But Radish Roman aboard Desert Malibu here impedes Mahogany's inside challenge, forcing Ryan Lewis to pull his mount from the squeeze. Desert Malibu past the post in front over the fast closing, a gift from Ben. But following a steward's inquiry and jockey's objection, Desert of Malibu disqualified and placed third behind Mahogany. A gift from Ben at 11 to 1, promoted to the winner's spot ahead of Mahogany for jockey Ramon Nepeer, owners DSTL and Associates, and trainer Fitzgerald Richards. To Barbados now, where trainer Jean Marcosier had a strong hand in Saturday's feature, Gordon Lewis Memorial. He swept last year's event with Zico, winning ahead of Zaid and So Suave in a 1 2 3 finish. Zaid and So Suave back to Sierra's fancied entries. But in this five-horse field, there was also the fairly accomplished Renaissance frolic from the Barn of Champion trainer Andrew Busha Nunes, a multiple stakes winner in the USA, whose two Barbados wins late last year came over this 7.8 furlong trip. And as Dean Springer picks up the call mid-race, it's the reigning Sandalane Spa Sprint champion Zaid, the 2-1 to one third favourite with top jockey Ricky Walcott setting the pace. As they're around the far turn and head up the hill towards the three for long marker. And it's a duel up front. Zaid, three parts of a length up on Masaru. Renaissance frolic a length away. On his outside, sir, Jimmy with a lightweight. So Swarov still has all the others to pass. After a half mile in 49 and 3, he's got just about 25 seconds to do it. As they come towards the quarter pole, and Zaid has dismissed Masaru, but he's going to have you know, coming out in Renaissance frolic. Sir, Jimmy's runs flattened out. So Swarov has just gone by Masaru and into the stretch to come. Uh, it's Zaid on the middle of the course on the outside. Here's Renaissance Frolic. It's Zaid on Renaissance Frolic. Zaid from Renaissance Frolic. So Swap crumbling home. But on the outside, Renaissance Frolic. And Zaid so Swap with one dust urge. With a strong finish on the outside, a well measured ride here by Ray Williams, who was the 2017 Sovereign Award winner as Canada's leading apprentice jockey for his exploits at Northlands Park and Central Downs in Alberta. Sir David Seals' Renaissance Frolic, third in February's Coolmore and seventh in the Sandalane Gold Cup, but rebounding here for the win. A third victory from eight starts in Barbados, add to that 11 wins in the USA, making it 14 lifetime victories so far. The Andrew Nunes trained Renaissance Frolic, a one length winner of the Gordon Lewis Memorial Handicap at 9 to 5 odds. The joint favourite with So Suave, who finished well for second. Zaid fading to third, 136.60 the winning time for 7.8 furlongs for trainer Andrew Nunes. And finally, the Grand National in Aintree, England, labelled Thorbred Racing's most famous steeplechase. It was live on Sportsmax Saturday morning. 32 starters, 30 fences and a massive disappointment early as the defending champion Korak Rambler unseated his rider at the first fence. Coming off the final jump, history-making female jockey Rachel Blackmore in the red silks and striped cap who won the 2021 edition threatened to board the 28-1 shot Manila Indo before I Am Maximus challenged with his winning run. As they race towards the elbow, Manila Indo, the loose horse, forcing them to the left-hand side and causing problems. Manila Indo has the lead from Delta Work. In third place and ridden along is I Am Maximus, who's now out after the leader. I Am Maximus for Paul Townend. Goes past Manila Indo. Delta Work, Galvin and Kenzie's light. But up towards the line, it is I Am Maximus who leads home. The gladiators for Paul Townend and Willie Mullins. A proud moment for jockey Paul Townend, who wins the £1 million Grand National for the first time. I am Maximus at 7 to 1, wins by a widening 7.5 lengths over Delta Work for trainer, now two time winner, Willie Mullins, clocking 9 minutes 27.68 seconds for the four and a quarter mile run on the Aintree turf. Our usual weekly tally of Caribbean wins in the USA. Before we go, in the past week since our last show, I've counted 14 victories. Among them, the Jamaican jockey Romero Ramsey Mirage, who had 
two wins at Aqueduct, where the Jamaican trainer Charlton Baker and the Guyanese trainer Lolita Shivmangal also won. There were two wins at Laurel Park for the Jamaican trainer Samuel Davis and top Barbadian jockey Patrick Husbands had a win at Gulfstream Park as he tunes up for the new season at Canada's Woodbine Racetrack starting later this month. We've been at the track covering top stories and exciting races in the sport of kings. Check us out again next week.